But before we go there, I want to explain now what fractional reserve banking means. Many people don't understand it. So before I start it, I want to give you an example. If you own one property, and this property has only one bedroom, and you are renting it out, how many times can you rent it out? Once, to the person who uses it. Can you rent it out to 10 people? No, you can't. Because only one person can occupy it. It doesn't make sense to rent it out to 10 people. Can you get 10 people giving you money for the same property? No, unlikely. So what does fractional reserve lending mean? In summary, what it means is, if a bank has a million dollars in its reserves, and I'll come back to how the reserves are calculated, it can borrow $10 million out into the market. This is what calls fractional reserve lending. You can borrow a multiple of how much you actually have in your bank. So if the reserve bank normally issues, gives money, the central bank gives money to any bank here in New Zealand, that's called central bank deposits. That's not counted as money, it's money between banks. That money allows them, or that portion, because the bank owes the central bank that money, but at one million. But the, the Wall Street Bank, or the bank that we normally engage with, takes that same million dollars and lends it out ten times. Usually they require 10%. In the age of greed, it's now gone as low as 2% I've seen. All right, so almost 20 times they're borrowing out. So, the, when you put your money into the bank, they take that and they add it to the reserves that they have. And they then borrow 10 times the money. that you have lent to the bank because it's your money in the bank. This is the system that has been operated. So I ask you, is this fair? So what supports these loans? I'm going to try to go as quick as I can, but it's important to understand this because this crystallizes what's happening in our economy right now. It used to be gold backing up all of the loans. No more. So what is it now? It's bank guarantees. The central bank gives a guarantee. So if a bank collapses now, how much do you think you can get from your bank account? What's the maximum? Hmm? $50,000. If you've got anything more than that, tough luck for you. The central bank only guarantees you $50,000 back. Do you understand? If the bank collapses and you want your money, just like what happened in the, when the France sent its warships, you can only get 50000 Now, don't go and open 10 accounts of 50000 if you had 500000 okay? <laughs> Just think where you put your money in, that's all. If you, the bank is now giving out all of these loans. It gave it out of nothing. But now, because it gave it to you and you bought a house, it now has a right to the house if you don't pay. So what's matching the bank's loans? Assets, houses, trade, cars, businesses, machinery. All of a sudden, the bank is very wealthy. It's got all of these assets because if you don't pay, what does it do they have? They've got all of these assets. Did they earn those assets? Did they go into business buying and selling? Is there hand-to-hand -hand transaction? Is there equality in the transaction? So... Is it in the bank's interest to give more loans or less? Is it in the bank's interest that house prices must go up or down? You, everybody understand that? The higher the prices of your house asset, which you have taken on loan, the more secure the assets are for the bank. So they can borrow more because their risk has gone down. So is it in the bank's interest for us to go into a recession? Yeah. No, no. It's in, it goes into a recession when the risk of someone not paying becomes too high. So they got to ease out the pressure in the system. So what happened is, you'll see the OCR rate went slightly up over the last few months. 
because they want to make it more difficult. Before you needed a 10 or 20, what, 20 percent or 10 percent, now you need a 20 percent deposit, all of these things. They're making it hard for you to get credit because they fear people can't pay back. So they want to make it slightly easier, take a breather, then go start back and start borrowing more. This is the system. It happened all the time. If you don't believe me, we come to an example. But what happens is money supply is not balanced. Now, even in this system, all of the money that you put out into the system has to be matched by what? By goods and services in the market. When you put too much money in the system, when it's not matched by goods and services in the market, what happens? You've got too much supply of money. That's why they talk about money supply is, is way too high. And what happens is the central bank say there's too much money. It's becoming too hot. People are not going to be able to play, pay their bills. And so what they do is they start calling it inflation. They say that because there's more money in the system, it can't match the price of goods. So your price of goods are going to go down or up to match the price of money. Which one is it? Up. All of us are paying more for almost everything that you are doing. Except your income is going down, which you are putting it in a bank, which is funding the cycle of lending again. Can you see how we are in the system? So inflation is called a tax on wealth. Why is it called a tax on wealth? It's because your wealth decreases whenever prices of goods go up. You can't buy as much as you could before. Your kebab in the shop was $8, now it's all $10. Oh, inflation, brother. Sorry. I've got to pay my rent. It's gone up. This is reality. Your salary is not gone up. Or your business is not gone up. So economies have to contract in order for the balance. So what happens to the price of goods we've discussed? The OCR rate obviously has gone up. So what happens when you over lend? You have a bubble. So in the United States, we had the global financial crisis. I don't have enough time, but what they did is they started selling debt. So a bank had all of this debt that it gave out, it gave a loan, and they said, okay, this is actually an asset in the name of the bank because people owe us the money, with me? They then took parts of this debt, which is all of the debt that is based on mortgages in Renuera, then they took part of that debt, which is all of the debt based on mortgages in Papatui, they put it together, they mixed it together, they call it a collateralized debt obligation, which is a derivative, and then they started selling it, and people started buying it. They started trading the right to buy debt, not the actual debt, the right to buy debt. They started trading the margin on the debt. Then someone said, okay, I'm going to mix that United, uh, this Auckland one with the Christchurch one, and we're going to another derivative, and that has a better quality because people are less likely to default in Christchurch, so we're going to sell that product as another derivative. Then somebody said, it's better to go and do it in Fiji because the Fiji ones are more likely to not go under. Then someone started saying, no, we're going to do it in New York. Then we're going to do it in Tokyo. Around the world, all of these derivatives, where you trade in the profit margin on a debt of a debt of a debt started going around. This is what you call the derivatives market. What can ever happen with this? It came in 2008. Finally, the bubble burst. Where a bank gave out five credit cards to one person who couldn't afford one credit card. Why? Debt is good. Don't worry. Give out the credit card. We're getting incentives, more and more loans. You can research it, Google it, you'll find all of the information that you need on here. But this is what happens when debt becomes too much. The problem here is, and they call it quantitative easing, by the way, in order to get out of it. They printed more money. So how do you stop it? You must by stopping the problem. You print more money. And why do you print money? It's because what you did is you gave money to the banks. And unfortunately, this brother in Lebanon, this month, if you follow in the news, he went and he wanted to take his money out of the bank in Lebanon. The bank said, no, you can't take the money out. Why? Because they didn't have the money. He wanted the cash to withdraw. So he went and he held him up for hostage. He says, I want my money. My father is sick. He has to go for surgery. Right. So if you can't afford a repayment on your loan, what happens? 
Now they are sitting on a mortgagee sale. After that is done as an individual, what happens? Do you owe the bank any more? It's finished. Right? The bank will sue you, take everything, take every last drop. But after that, it's finished. Islam accepts for you to go into business and business doesn't do bad, doesn't do good. It's a natural cycle. But Islam doesn't accept you bailing out the people who started the issue in the first place. So what is a government bailout? What they did is they started printing money and they wrote a check out. In those days it was a check, these days it's just sending of digital digits one from one account to another. Gave it to the bank and say, don't worry, this is to hold you up. And they do something called a switch between central bank reserves and money that is printed to quantitative easing. They offset each other. In other words, the bank doesn't have to take a fall. It ends up with actually taking the money that the, they printed for them by the central bank, borrowing it out, earning even more money, and not having to go bankrupt at all. The bank does not fall. The exceptional circumstances, you've got to let one bank fall, and we all know Lehman Brothers fell, and the Icelandic bank fell in the 2008-2009. But generally, the banks don't fall, because if the banks fall, the confidence in the system falls. The confidence in the central banking system falls. So one bank or two banks is okay, but many banks? No, because people will lose confidence in putting their money in the banks. So I ask you, is this fair? And do we agree then, is this all-consuming Western banking system, is this predatory and oppressive, or is it natural and normal? So I ask you, well, this is a statement more. There's more interest-bearing debt than all the physical paper money in the world. Just let it sink in. There's more debt in the world than actual money that has been printed, cash. So the national debt of the USA in 1921 was 373 billion. A hundred years later, it's 28 trillion. So what does this mean, national debt? It means how much the nation owes. So who bought that debt? Who do they owe it to? You know that slide I showed you with all of those Middle East governments buying treasuries? Those are the people they owe the money to. So is it in the interest of somebody who's invested in U.S. to let the U.S. fall? What's the current national debt? This was a few days ago, 30 trillion. There's actually a website, you click on it, it tells you how much it is, the ticker, it carries on. You just see numbers flying around. 30 trillion. The United States is bankrupt, brothers and sisters. The US dollar is propped up. It is worth nothing, except what people give value to. And it's also worth who you fear the most. And that's why in Surah Al-Baqarah, we're going to come to it. Allah will deprive riba of all blessing, but will give increase for deeds of charity. For Allah loves not those who are ungrateful and wicked. This is why the strongest verses that Allah Ta'ala has is on riba. Quickly, we're moving on. I know I'm running late, we've got a break for tea. In the early 2010s, we've got smart home technology that started. You all see the photo there? You all recognize the photo? That's the Burj. Finance, how? Leave that question unanswered. The rise of tech giants, age of social media. Everybody has an opinion, but now what is opinion actually counts. Then we have the Arab Spring in 2011. New government in Tunisia, in Algeria, in Egypt, short lived. The US drone attack start in Yemen, in Pakistan. The high cost of wars in Middle East and in Afghanistan was all financed by debt. All financed by debt. So how much, I asked you, how much did it cost? 20 years of war and terror, how much did it cost? Eight trillion dollars. This is their numbers, not our numbers. One trillion of those costs is interest charges. Moving on, past 10 years and moving towards 2030 is what I call the war for digital domination. This is where we are currently. I'm sorry about the brothers with the screen and the, the light. 
We have wars in Syria. Russia backs Assad. You all know what happened in 2012, 2013, 2014. Gaza and Alexa are still under attack. We've got the Middle East war zones. Syrian refugees go to EU. War in Yemen. The Ukraine war kicked off in 2014. Russia then took over Crimea. Didn't we talk about Crimea right at the beginning with the Ottoman Khilafat 200 years ago? History repeats itself. We have now the Trump presidency. We've got the rise of the far right, these radical groups. We even seen it in 15 March 2019 here in New Zealand. Then we have COVID-19. We've got lockdowns. We've got mandatory vaccinations, supply chain delays, government debt, fuel, inflation rises, massive debt levels, the OCR increases. We now have the Biden presidency. Then we have a revolt in the capital. We have U.S. troops out of Afghanistan. Subhanallah. How a lateral system works. U.S. troops out. NATO base starts expanding after Biden comes in. Russia says, no, we're going to do a special military operation. In other words, if you look at the other media, it says Russia invades Ukraine. Depending on which side you listen to, you have a different narration. So there's a war for the narration. There's wheat shortages, EU energy crisis. Russia returns to the gold standard. You guys are all familiar and you're aware that Russia has returned to the gold standards. The whole world was based on paper currency, not backed up by gold. Russia has changed. It is now backing its currency up by gold. It now uses a different payment system, international payment system called CIPS, which is set up by China. No longer SWIFT. Remember when you want to send money overseas, you use SWIFT? They don't use that system because they were kicked out. You're not part of the boys club, so you get kicked out. So you use an alternate system. And China has this year in April, no, no, in April 2020, it's launched its first digital payment currency. It's ready to go. It's called digital renminbi. That's the, that's the token, that's the currency there at the moment. If you can get it. All right, so on this one, Surah Al Rum, I'm just going to read it out. Corruption has appeared throughout the land and sea. They reason over the hands of what people have earned. So Allah may let them taste part of the consequence of what they have done. So perhaps they will return to what is right. So I think it's important to reflect from the, the history we've, we've been learning and studying how when riba is at the core of it, Allah always destroys it. Allah always destroys it. And the facade and fitna we're seeing is a direct result of that system. And it will continue repeating itself if we continue supporting that system. Exactly. Okay. I know I'm standing between all of you and T, so I'll go very quickly and then we'll break, inshallah. This is a chart of the Russian ruble to US dollar. So before the war, it was trading at about 77 rubles to the US dollar. When the war started, it devalued up to $135. In other words, it lost half its value with the sanctions and everything else. So what did Russia do? First, it said all of its gas that is going to be sold has to be sold in rubles, no longer US dollar. Then it said all of the commodities that it sells, fertilizer, everything else, has to be based in rubles, no longer dollars. Then finally, it said that we are backing up our currency by gold. 500 rubles, rubles is equivalent to $53 or a gram of gold which was actually even a discount to the normal gold price that was being traded. This is the equivalent of what people call a nuclear bomb in economic terms. By you going and saying you are backing your currency to gold, what happens to all of the other snakes that the magicians have thrown? And do you think Russia will stand for this? 